Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 66. So today we will not go to Jeremy for the Bibcot no-gov license. Um, you, want me to do my, you want me to do my Jeremy impression? <laughs> go the, ahead. The Seeds of Liberty podcast is brought to you by the Bibcot no government license. I got nothing. It's not deep. It's not deep. I can't go deep. I'm not deep, man. He's too, so you're, deep. You're, I didn't have too, to touch my too, volume. You're too juvenile. It's got <laughs> He's Larry Podcast is covered by the got no government license. <laughs> this allows for reuse for, agents, for, for for anyone other than government and the agents thereof. You can find out more information on bipcot.org. Yeah. So yeah, so today <laughs> so today we have um, Bodie who is sitting in uh, for Jeremy who is um, uh, just having a wonderful time at Pork Fest. Everyone's so jealous. Um, <laughs> so Bodie you can find some of his work on the Sovereignty Network and the Agora Facebook pages. And uh, hopefully he'll be starting up a podcast as well. Contribute another voice. We need more voices in the Liberty community. Uh, and uh, and so today we have as a guest uh, Christopher Dioji, who is a uh, hardcore libertarian <laughs> from <laughs> England. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, you can find some of his work on alternativeanswers.net. And on Facebook, uh, his pages are Christopher Dioji, uh, D-E-O-J-E-E, -E, and uh, the People's Public Trust. Uh, there's two pages. And so we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in Britain with Brexit. Uh, it's all over everyone's YouTube channel and feed and everything. So uh, you got to find at, out. At the, current, at the current time of this podcast recording and everything, it's about what two a.m. there right now, Chris. It's quarter to two, yeah, quarter, quarter to two, till two, yeah, quarter and two. Uh, the news, uh, Sky News, is reporting fifty point two percent to uh, forty nine point whatever percent. So it's 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 on a razor's edge as we're going. I'm gonna try to keep this updated as we go so we can react live to it. But uh, why don't you just kind of tell us what's going on? Because all we hear is what the news is saying. Obviously, there's a different story. And I think a lot of Americans are very, very, and I say Americans loosely. A lot of people that listen to this show wouldn't consider themselves Americans, but a, a lot of a lot of people in America are very interested in this Brexit for what it means for global trade, what it means for yeah. everything. Yeah. It means quite a bit because, as far as I'm understanding, the EU uh, ha uh, twenty percent of its budget comes from just England, <laughs> just the UK. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they lose that, they're gonna go belly up pretty quickly. It's uh, it's going to be a struggle, yeah, that's for sure. The EU will be floundering somewhat for a while to to digest, basically, because it's the first time a nation has ever tried to leave. Nobody's nobody's tried to leave since joining, so there's going to be a few years resolving it. Um, they they may try and do what they did in Ireland and just pretend it didn't happen and throw another vote and you know and keep keep throwing votes until it goes their way sort of thing um but i don't i'm not i'm not so sure this the 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 mood over here has been very interesting because most of the press and all of the roadside advertising has been massively in favor of leave massively you're talking like well where i am in anglia 90 which is primarily tory conservative area but wealthy people things like that but also, you know, quite, quite a lot of working class as well. But um, uh, Basildon been... just voted out. Sorry, Basildon just voted out hard. Oh, did they? Wow, wow. Well, that's the thing. You see, I mean, there's been a massive lean towards it. I mean, apparently, even a piece of press said the other day that the Queen wanted a Brexit. You know, and it's a massive. Even if it's a rumor, it's a massive rumor to even be thrown out there. But the, I mean, the ratio of propaganda towards Leave over Remain here has probably been about. 
90 to 10 percent so and the remaining well, change is gonna... scary right yeah well, well no 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 on leave on leave you're talking about 90 percent leave signs and 10 percent that have just popped up recently was remain on them and uh, there's loads of people talking Brexit. A lot of, and, but but uh, you know, to be ve- to be very honest, and I've been involved in, in politics in the UK in the past, and it's I have never felt such a, a confusion and a uncertainty in people as to which way to go. Even right down to today, a lot of people I know did not know which way they were going, and um, people who are usually very like-minded and would choose similar paths are going in completely opposite ways on this. It's really interesting how some people are interpreting freedom as being in the EU and some are interpreting freedom as being out of it. It's, well, there's, uh, well, there's, bizarre, and it's, it, you thinking. know, it all stems from this, this fundamental t- belief in, in freedom. Okay. There are two beliefs in freedom and I'm not saying that the out is going to bring fundamentally more freedom to yeah. the British people. And I'm not saying staying in is going to bring fundamentally more freedom, but there's essentially two different freedoms that people believe in. There's freedom to risk and, uh, to, to make, uh, your own choices. And then there's a freedom from risk and from making your own choices, uh, that safety from not, you know, uh, not ever being compromised or, or you know, uh, uh, failing. And, and, and a lot of people, especially in uh, heavily socialized countries, believe they, they, they fundamentally do not understand freedom correctly. They, yeah. they see it as that freedom uh, from risk. If we stay there, the government's going to protect us, not yeah. I want to protect myself. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a this is a, a big disease over here. It's a collectivist disease that has usurped people's ideology. It's usurped their idealism and their hopes in a very cancerous way because it pretends to be open-minded and invite alternative views and to promote freedom. But as soon as people want to do something differently, you'll 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 find aggression and conflict and name calling and I mean, I mean, but but the, the left obviously has to see that there's a reason for boris johnson and nigel farage and le pen to be popping up people mm. the uh, especially the, the 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 swing to the right always happens when the middle class real finally realizes when it's getting royally screwed yeah. and uh what happens is that it's fear it's all fear-based and yeah. And, and so is the the reason for the swing to the left. It's all based on fear, you know. Yes. That capitalism's gone awry. People are making too much money. Equal, equality's not happening. That's what mm-hmm. happens when 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 the right is in control. So it's always mm-hmm. this swing back and forth. And right now, I feel like we're on the precipice of a swing back to the right, especially yeah. in Europe, especially with all the Muslim migrants, especially in the UK. Because the thing is, a lot of the benefits that. Uh, other countries have experienced for us being members of the EU, we don't experience because we're still an island. So we still have border control. We still have passports on the, or at least photo ID on the, on the, on the movement within the, within the European state. So a lot of these kind of relaxed benefits that the, 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 the Europeans experience, we, we don't actually get. Um, so it's, 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 uh, it's just really interesting. I mean, I've never, I've never seen such a, a close point and counterpoint from, from you know, good thinking people, well-meaning people as well. But it's interesting how uh, ideas of freedom have been usurped by both sides, and both are, to me, are still missing. The, and to, to people like yourselves, are still missing the point altogether of what freedom is. You know, it's just, it's just not even in there at all. That's a lot of the basis of my past work with the People's Public Trust as well was about. You know, f- fixing public service to self dismantle itself because we don't need representation, sort of thing. You know, because the basic trust that was placed in these people was breached in the first place. And uh, you know, off the back of that, it's like, well, breach of trust, game over. You know, it's like you the a lot of the work I was I was doing over here was about the reclaim of the master title in relation to public servants. I don't know if you have it over there, but over here, you the, the males are masters until they're seven years old, and then you become a mister. And actually, the master is about the relationship to the public servant. And that's the thing that kind of gets a bait and switch off you. So you get that bait and switch, you get that exchange for limited liability. And then next thing you know, you're under the employee, the employee instead of instead of in, in, in the role of the employer. And it's just it, there's, there's just loads of details to do with how um, sovereignty and freedom is being encroached upon 
progressively. And what we're dealing with here in this in this um, uh, Brexit situation, and the reason why people are leaning towards the Brexit is that um, the, the, those ideas of personal sovereignty are really strong on this island. You know, um, it's funny because because for us, we we would have we, we to travel to Brussels for a decision maker. It just just seems crazy. And as as more and more the EU has been overriding British lawmakers, and people are feeling the consequences of that, there's just been a real real uprising in uh, a movement towards Brexit. But there's really funny there's really funny things like if you if you go to the Telegraph website and look at their poll poll checker, they should they do it they do a thing that's showing. Uh, typical voters. It's about twenty seconds long, and the, tw- the, the, the typical voters thing is almost hilarious. I, I just invite your reflections on it. So they're saying that a typical in voter, typical in, is an eighteen to twenty nine year old female mm-hmm. who is a graduate mm-hmm. in the upper income bracket, lives in Scotland, votes the Green Party. Yeah. Your typical out voter is a sixty plus male, mm-hmm. uh, lives in East Anglia. Lower income bracket, lower education bracket, manual skilled worker, just you know, for the Telegraph to paint that as their picture in twenty seconds mm. is just it's right. just adding adding to people. So you know, the, the confusion is crazy. I've never felt it. It's, it's literally been like a palpable miasma. It's just it's just it's just fascinating. Well, I mean, Nigel Farage is what went back on say. Like, I don't know if you've been watching, but I've I've kind of been on and off all day just because I'm generally interested in this entire uh, situation uh, and Westminster's checking in right now, but uh, the Nigel Farage has already said, I think that they're going, that in is going to route it. Uh, yeah. And then he said, well, I don't know. We might win. And then he said, well, I don't know. They're going to route it. Like it's he, even he doesn't know. Even the guy who's like, would, would he would give his life tonight if, if it would pass. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He would sacrifice himself for it. He would, he but, would. You, you, you know, that exact sentiment, that's exactly what I'm talking about. People who are normally so clear on the point are just like, oh, I just don't know. You know, I just I don't know. I think people are seeing results. what's happening to Germany. And I think they're seeing, because it is closer to Turkey and it is closer to Greece. And I think they're saying, especially Brits, like true blue Brits are saying, ah, uh, ah, uh, no way. Yeah. I, I don't want to have to either move to America or Canada to not get genocided. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's, a, exactly. it's, a manifest, exactly. it's a manifestation of nationalism. Exactly, exactly. It's, all, it's entirely context-based. I mean, everyone's looking at the system and they see the power, right? But they want to use the power of the system to free themselves from whatever their immediate context-based problem is, which ends up actually being the system itself. So they're they're basically arguing in this little loop, and, yes. and it, the reason it's such a indecision or everyone's leaning on the fence because it's not really going to change anything. Yeah. Well, this is this is the thing. This is the thing where people are saying get the country back. The argument that's coming out against that is well, who's getting the country back at the minute? With you, if you look at who's at the helm, you're looking at giving four years of unrestrained, un you know, no oversight, Tory right wingism really which is going to you know first thing that's going to go is the human rights act soon after that it's going to be you know a lot of other stuff in relation to uh, employment law which a lot of british business would support i mean i i i i almost feel like it's a stitch up for out myself because of the way the propaganda has gone in the press because of the way the fervor of freedom has been stoked in terms of access to remedy in terms of who's making the rules all that sort of stuff um and uh, because on, on an almost cynical side, one of the prime beneficiaries are going to be the existing wealthy, because what it's going to create is a perfect little un-EU regulated wealthy hotspot just off the coast of Europe, where well, it also of might, and deals can be worked out. It also might mm. bring the biggest boom to the British economy yes. in, in the longest. Yes. Because I, I think the, I think the I think the pragmatic voter right now, the person that doesn't look at anything other than just like, OK, let me really just look at this for a second. Okay, the EU, we already see the path they're going on. More stagnation, more rules, more regulations, more oligopoly, more BS. Why don't we try to pull ourselves back in and see if us as Britons can fix this? I I think that's a noble thing to do. 
I don't think it's going to work because central planning never works. But yeah. I do think that this secession movement, and I think that a lot of people around the world are looking at this as a secession movement because the yeah. European Union has turned into a bona fide de facto federation government. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I think unelected, I think people are saying, if Britain's out, why can't Spain be out? Why can't Germany? Be, why can't I be out? Mm-hmm. And, and then it eventually comes down to the individual. Why am I here? Why, if, if France can yeah. leave the EU, if Texas can leave the United States, why can't I leave Texas? Yeah. 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 No, no, not, time, leave, yeah. Not, not leave geographically, but. Just yeah, exactly. The step, be a citizen. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Cease not, citizenship. Cease citizenship. This is it, right. <laughs> I ran into that. I got, I got a polling survey the other day. And I, I was like, oh, are you registered? I was like, no, I don't. I want to unregister. It was dead silence for like a minute. He had to look at his book. I heard the papers going. He was like, "All right, that's all the questions." Like they can't even comprehend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. So, so as far as like you kind of swinging towards libertarianism, it looks like you were kind of involved in some kind of public works, kind of in. Oh, with initially, it. that's why I ended up libertarian. Was I? I was. Um, I worked for the Scottish Parliament when it was first formed. There was a. Uh, I uh, managed the allowances team there for a couple of years, and so every expense that went through every member's hands, 120 offices, all went through my hands. We had quite a lot of power as a small office, um, and I became a whistleblower on expenses because of fraud that went back to party level, and that began my sort of uh, d- discontent and b- b- perceptive breakthrough from the inside, really, from thinking the way to fix things was on the inside, but then I found that when you get inside large organizations, there is an inertia that uh, is almost insurmountable to overcome um, and uh, it, it must be on a one by one as you say voluntary basis where it's like well I choose no longer to do this you know and I, uh, I think there's two yeah. types of people and I think you're one of these types of people I think there's people that can get into government and I think we see this around the world people that can get in the government and then they can peep behind the curtain and they see Oz and they either go yeah I can play along or they go what the fuck yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I think you, I think, I think we, we obviously, obviously see that you were like, "Hey, what the hell's going on here?" Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was what the people's public trust was all about. It was about a fundamental breach of trust because where is the, where is the trust for the well-being of the community? If that's what you're set up as, as a body of providence in public service, then unless you are serving that function, you're not functional as an entity because your sole function, by definition, is public service. If that's not what's happening, and if that's not what's influencing the decisions, then then it's, it should be self dismantled, you know, because it has it has no purpose. Interestingly, though, because that that's really what's happening here with the privatisation is it is a sort of semi dismantling. But the problem is it seems to be moving to some kind of ugly minarchy rather than rather than anything else. But I think you you hit upon the point about uh, the secession movement because I think what people are seeing is that or they're feeling that remote decision making that you can't even see the face you can't even understand what they're saying and they're feeling the alienation of that and it's like yeah okay um, no matter no matter what the benefits are uh, surely we can work out our problems closer to home and I think it's more that it's as uh, there's a great video of Tony Benn the late great you know Tony Benn was a, was a, you know a, a great thinking man and well and outspoken but one thing one thing he said about the EU was that it wasn't a vote against foreigners it was a vote for democracy for him you know, it wasn't. It wasn't about because it's being. It's being Brexit is being pegged as being a vote for hate or a vote for racism yeah. or a vote for fascism, whereas a vote for the EU is like a vote for love and a vote for unity. And they've had this kiss. I don't know if you've seen this kiss movement around Europe, where so there's been a lot in the press the last few days where major cities in Europe have lit up major skyscrapers with the UK flag, and they've been filming people sending this kiss of love with their love for England as to why they would want to leave. Hmm. And so there's all this sort of... I, uh, I, I don't think pe- people people will buy that, but they're not going to buy that when certain parts of their cities are literally being shut down. Yeah, yeah, they're going to yeah. buy it why it's sunshine and rainbows. They're going to buy yeah. this hate, love thing when it's sunshine and rainbows, but they're not when they're going to see all their entitlements go belly up because of yeah. the immigration. And then, because look, Reality of the situation is, all right, you cannot have a socialist government, and that's what the UK is, a socialist yeah. government. You cannot have a socialist government with open borders. 
You can, though, have a socialist government or attempt to have one with closed borders because you cannot have immigration in or out of a socialist government. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. When you have people in, there's no jobs for them. So either they get on the dole or they die. So what's so they get on the dole and then they're on the dole till they die. Mm -hmm. So what? You can't have this socialism. Socialism, the, the realities of the situation have to be be met. And yeah. I think more and more of, uh, especially Britain, but more and more of Europe is seeing this. They're, they're yeah. finally seeing this. Yeah, People yeah, here yeah, in America yeah. have been screaming and pitching a fit about it for 100 years. Well, I mean, over here, we're getting a lot of footage of, uh, in, in underground press, basically, not in mainstream press, but in underground press of unrest in you know uh, france and spain and italy on similar similar basis which is you know if britain goes it's quite likely that others will be charging for a referendum on it and that will be that will be very very interesting times to be in really you know because the european communities act was like 1972 so i i i for one haven't lived without that sort of organization, it would be very interesting to see if it succeeded to that level, where then, like you said, again, if I don't have to be a member of that, then do I have to be a member of this? And then it, yeah, it, it, why just, can't, it just comes back to the individual. Why can't yeah. the UK essentially secede from the EU? And then why can't the UK let Scotland, Northern Ireland uh, uh, secede? And then why can't London become its own city state? Because truly London needs to be its own city state. It really yeah. does. And yeah. then uh, it, it, seriously, it's a behemoth, and all of Britain goes yeah. with London, and London is not a representat- representation exactly. of Britain yeah. outside of London. Yeah. yeah, and yet it behaves as if it is, and that's the problem with its relationship with the rest of the United Kingdom. Is the fact it's like Los Angeles it, and New York. Those yeah. are not representations of the United States. They are yeah. not. Those are yeah. basically world centers. Well, it's like, the it's, yeah, it's like Singapore or Hong Kong, or mm-hmm. those aren't. Hong Kong's not a Chinese city. Singapore's not. A, it is, but it isn't. They, those are world yeah. cities. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're right. London absolutely is in that same bracket. You cannot class it and its level of multiculturalism, functional multiculturalism, with what's happening in other UK cities. Some of those are close, but nothing is quite like the dynamicism of London and how it, how it seems to work. Yeah. Cool. Actually, I'm I'm curious to hear more about your history. Like, how did you come to volunteerism? I know you said you were in the parliament, but like, what uh, yeah. literature, literature, or books, or or, it or personalities? It was, it was it was a it was a process. Um, I was I was doing other uh, self development stuff on uh, what I called the myth of patriarchy. I was doing I was doing men's work on the myth of patriarchy. Nice. And it was all based on everyday language, saying, "Well, how can it be a patriarchy if?" Uh, there's places that I can't go as a man unless I wear certain clothes. So if you imagine, I, if I'm going to work in the in the city, I have to wear certain clothes, don't I? So what is the part I wear here? What do they call it? Collar. Okay. Yeah. What's this part here? Uh, the collar. A cuff. Cuffs. cuffs. Okay, so oh. Who, oh, who, sorry. Who, who wears a collar and cuffs? <laughs> Prisoners, <laughs> right? So how is that? How is that a patriarchy? <laughs> right. If it's the men that are collared and we're yeah. in the group, there's a collared. comedian. There's a comedian uh-huh. you should watch. She's great. I can't remember what she was on Netflix the other day, but she was talking about. I don't know what the hell these women are talking about. This patriarchy. Listen, women, all we got to do is pop out babies. Otherwise, we can just sit at the house and watch TV. How? What? That's like say. That's like reindeer. Uh, 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 that's like uh, Rudolph pulling uh, Santa Claus and saying, and Santa Claus saying, "Oh, my pa- uh, my Rudolph." <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rudolph's in control. No, he may look like he is, but he's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so it all, it all stemmed from that, and then on a progressive, a progressive journey. On I did a lot of uh, law challenges on people's right to assisting people with the access to and use of land. And uh, as that hmm. being the one thing that all human beings really have a fundamental right to, because there's this interesting thing where people like you and I, the way we're educated, we'll refer to indigenous people without including ourselves. You know, as we've got this, we've got this funny quirk of mind <laughs> that we talk about visiting nature, you know, and they say, well, where, where are you the rest of the time then? You know, and, you know, we, we view the earth as dirty and something that has to be shoved away from the door. 
And it's like this is part of that colouring process, you know, it's part of that part of that taking away from our, our natural habitat as earthlings, which is that thing we're told is dirty, you know. So the access to and use of land is the biggest issue I think we face in the UK because of clearances that have happened both in Ireland and Scotland and the, the move to urbanisation, which is denying people the very thing that brings mental and emotional well oh, yeah agenda, is, agenda 21 is real like that i exactly. thought it was a, yeah, yeah, i yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah. a conspiracy but it, it is real no no and in, in the uk there are there's people talking of overcrowding and yet when you when you drive around the place there are countless empty fields because farmers are given subsidies for not keeping animals and for not having crops they're actually paid for not having things. oh man no because uh, here's the thing that's what we call nice price fixing beautiful Sorry? that's that's what we call price fixing christopher I pr i'm pretty mm. sure you know that what happens yeah. when you price fix and the government collapses is all those farmers that would have been making pigs for bacon and and yeah. and growing cotton for shirts and 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 all kinds of stuff they go oh shit my subsidies out i don't have any money to buy seeds and equipment and stuff to start my farm back up oh we're all going to starve that's yeah. what's happening in, in venezuela yeah. right now yeah but 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 uh but dave you're not you're not really understanding the socialism down there is not the socialism that oh, yeah, sanders it's, it's a different kind of socialism right <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, David it's like, Cameron's it's, socialism is different. It's, 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 it's like it'll work this time. It's, it's like the meme. It's, it's like it's like the meme with the cow. And it says, it says a democratic socialist cow is when you you paint the cow like different colors. It, it's, it's like somebody tells you your cow is responsible for genocide. So what you do is you paint the cow different colors and say it's a different cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> So here, I'm going to do a little update, I mean, for anybody that's oh, staying yeah. current, because we are kind of talking about the Brexit. Yes, uh, of course. Eden votes, Eden votes out, Harlow votes out. Um, it's 53-46 right now for wow. out. Uh, wow. Yeah. Let's wow. see here. It's funny, this this ties in with what you were just saying on the out, is uh, these farmers, a lot of the subsidies are EU subsidies. So mm. that was saying we're going to nice. find out the answer to that pretty soon. <laughs> I, I think about this, okay? If the EU collapses currently, as yeah. Britain is belly up, right? Well, let's play risk here. If the EU collapses, how many people in Europe starve due to their farming being taken away? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then yeah, and the, and the, and they don't have these to protect their property. No, no, they don't. They don't, they don't, don't have these at all. So. You, you've, you're just going to be ransacked by people who are on the dole, and now they're yeah. starving. Yeah. House yeah, by the house, they're just going to be a mob. So, yeah. what's you're going to have? You're going to have cow farmers running around with turkey basters trying to make more cows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's yeah, see. Let's it's... see if any other big ones went out. Um, Wellenbro went out. Bury went out. Harlow went out. And, um, yeah. Uh, uh, City of London went uh, in, so. Yeah. But that There's City of London is not in London. Yeah, yeah, of course it went in because the business sector is, 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 is they want business to just run smoothly. They don't want to change. Ooh, if you ever want a really cool conspiracy, look up the City of London. Just look oh, it up. Just look up. London. Just look it up in in the history of no, it. It's it's pretty. I know wild. about it. I know a lot about the City of London. Yeah. And it, it the was... chap in the City of London who sits behind the Speaker of the House of Commons. You know, it's very interesting that there's a, that a representative of the city of city of London actually sits there and has a say in Commons when they shouldn't really. It is an independent state. It has its own law. It has its own police. It's very interesting. You know who you yeah. know who cre helped help create that state, right? Sorry. You know who helped create that state, right? No, no, go on. Uh, Mayor Mayor Rothschild. Oh, what a surprise! Mm -hmm. So keep digging. Look yeah. up that. Bum, bum, bum. Oh no, I'm a conspiracy <laughs> theorist. Ooh, no, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Real. This is fact. Uh, he he did start the city of London. Oh, I believe he, it. he wanted an economic free zone for his banks. Of course, yeah. of mm. course, and that's why mm. Brexit, I think, has been is is favoured by uh, secretly favoured by people like that, really, and why it's been in a lot of the press is because it's going to bring a lot of financial freedom without EU regulation. I think yeah, it's good. prices are going to be driven up. I think in time it's going to be a positive thing because of all the things we've already spoken about. But there's an interesting mentality on this island as well because um, the Europeans have and sometimes, like the Germans, call us island monkeys, you know, because we have a funny perspective on our neighbours because 
our boundaries are fixed by water. Whereas in Europe, you know, you imagine, you know, some of these cent uh, cent Central European countries, you look at the borders and you see all the undulations in the border territories. And it's like every single one of those has been fought over, argued about, debated about, and all the rest of it to define those nations and those, those ideas. Whereas the UK is, is fixed by the land. It's a, it's a very different situation. So the, the EU, are, people in Europe are much more welcoming of neighbours and visitors, you know, they're, 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 they're much more tired of direct conflict on their physical borders. Just look at Japan. Yeah. J Japan yeah. is some of the most eth eth ethnically uh, intolerant people on the planet. Okay. They don't like anybody that is in Japan. They really don't. They, they may put up a front, like but they don't. I'm not trying to generalize all Jap Japanese people. I'm no. sure there are people out there that do like everybody, but most of them are very culturally unaware of other people. Yeah. They don't like them. And, and why would you expect anybody from an island nation not to be? I mean, it's yeah. not a shocker. It shouldn't be a yes, shocker. I agree. I agree. I agree. And I think that has to be factored in when people are calling this Brexit vote racist or whatever. It's not that. It is just about the it's fact It's a different that perspective on the world. It is, man. it is a different perspective. It is. It really is. And like, like we were saying on the issue of the migration, um, you know, in Europe, say, for example, again, say you've got a spill of a large number of people into a, a Central European nation. There's plenty of overspill backdrop nations that those people can continue to move through into or have others pushed through into to diffuse the spread of people. Whereas in the UK, <laughs> we don't really have that. There's you got to no, throw them out no to water. <laughs> back into exactly. It's like, uh, 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 you know, that would um, be a good uh, political. Uh, if 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 the Brexit doesn't pass, I already have the uh, the the political cartoon that could go front on the Daily Mail. Uh, uh, just Britain and all the British people like hanging barely off the uh, island with a wave coming from the EU. That would that would that would get all the people feared and fired. I'm not, see. I'm, I always think of propaganda, and when I see <laughs> propaganda, and I and I've been watching this because this is going to happen in the United States when Texas tries to secede. The minute entitlements go belly up, Texas is going to pull out. The minute, and mm. all the same tactics that Britain is using is going to be used here. And the first the first chance of secession is always peaceful. Even uh, at the Civil War in the America in America, it was peaceful. They law your lawyers were sent. Hey, we just want to back out. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us out. And they were like, well, you can't do that because we're going to come kill you. So you got too much of the stuff that we need. We can't let you yeah. get out. So that's what's going to happen to EU. I believe if Britain votes out tonight. Mm, I think I think mass 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 propaganda gets put on the British people. Oh, I agree. I agree. And, uh, to be honest, we have we have some some of the I think some of the most sophisticated psychological manipulation techniques used on us by one of the most sophisticated and well practiced governments at it that have ever been. You they know? wrote the it's, book, it's, man. Master master class propagandist mental game players. This little island. It's, it's, it's staggering what they've achieved. Experimenting on. 26 nations if not more through the acquisition of the commonwealth obviously so there are uh, what an interesting language that was the commonwealth but there's that you know there's a lot of experience there in um you know cultural experimentation methodology gaining of insight there's been some really in interesting articles written about the the, the uh, british government's uh, understanding and use of insurgency counterinsurgency counter message counterpoint to confuse and mislead and that's why you know americans you guys you guys are going to like try and kill somebody like obama, obama or something like that you know british they don't, they don't, they don't do they, british don't do things like that anymore instead they'll support they'll infiltrate they'll pay for it they'll they'll support it they'll actually you know help it along in its right direction and then they'll uh, defame it ridicule it you know mislead it confuse it turn it astray turn people on each other create confusion and disarray and then you don't have to do anything because nobody trusts each other um, it's highly effective. Well, that, that's exactly how it happens well, here with everything, man. Yeah. With everything, if you look at the the current gun debate in the United States, the yes. left and the and the and the Democrats and 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 yeah. anybody that's pro gun, if you hear their arguments, there are none. They yeah. have no arguments. Yeah. It's all emotional plea yeah. to uh, to uh, something that may have happened. Oh, yeah. thirty thousand people die a year to guns. We'll take out all the suicides because if somebody's committing suicide. Not having access to a gun, 
is not going to change the fact that they want to kill themselves. So yeah. they're going to find a way to kill themselves. So you take out that, it's a staggering. I think it was only like 900 people died to rifle fire in America. 330 million people? 900 people? 900 <laughs> people died before noon in America. But Dave, if we can save just one person, you know, come on. You gotta think about I mean, it. if we could just disarm those <laughs> damn Americans so we can install a world government, you know? If we could just do that. I, I was actually nice. talk, I was actually talking with one of my uh, homeschooling friends today, uh, his woman, mother, about guns, uh, because her her family live in uh, live in Florida, and, uh, and and you know she's really distrustful of guns, uh, just like my mother is, um, and uh, and you're right, a lot of the arguments are either you know factually incorrect or purely emotional, yeah. you know, and it's like um, I'm just afraid of them, and I and, and I try to say you know fear. Most of the time, fear is rooted in ignorance and inexperience. <laughs> trust himself. Trust himself. Trust himself. Yeah. That's the issue. They're afraid to trust okay. themselves. Yeah, They're afraid yeah. to look themselves in That's, the mirror. And, and, and so and, what? You know, and, and here's my thing, and I tell people this d almost daily. I'm more terrified of a wild man with a knife than a wild man with a gun. Do you want to know why? When a gun is out of bullets, it is a paperweight. When a, a knife does not run out of bullets... It doesn't run out of things. You can like, – okay, the thing that happened in Orlando the other day, <laughs> tw less than 24 hours later, someone went on a rampage with a knife in China and killed 74 people. 74 with a knife, a yeah. kitchen knife. He, he like b went berserk in a kitchen and yeah. just started – so so that – so ban drugs, ban guns, ban whatever. It's not going to help you get safe. I promise you. I ban, promise you. Ban all the things. Come on, Dave. That, you know, Chris, the first thing when people say stuff about banning guns and stuff, the minute I tell them, I just say ban ban drugs, man. I don't yeah. even I don't even try to have a logical debate with these people anymore. I just yeah. say ban drugs because the minute they, they, that they realize, holy shit, drugs can't be banned because it doesn't work. Yeah. And they go, well, OK, guns can't be banned because that won't work. Look, yeah. drug use rates in America before the DEA were at one percent nationwide. They're at one percent nationally still. Yet, if you watch the news, there's a drug epidemic and everyone's dying in the streets. You also look at this right now. If they tried to ban guns, there's a hundred plus million lawful gun owners. That's just lawful gun owners that yeah. they know about in the United States. If you ban guns, how many gun owners are you going to have in the United States? Well over a million. You're probably going to start a revolution. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The key here, though, is this is just the usurping of attention, though. It's the usurping of attention on hairline thread points to play on head and heart as a well-known internal conflict zone to just have people making these small matters important in their daily lives so they're not getting on with the voluntary pursuit of personal endeavor, you know. You're, you're absolutely right. That The politician's yeah. job is to distract you and get you to pay absolutely. attention and, and legitimize their robbery. Absolutely, to make them important. That's it. To make them important in your world, in your life, so you legitimize the state by your attention, by your very attention, by your very identification with it, by saying, we this or we that. As I'm sure as you're we, in... as, as soon as we're doing that, we're a member. Well, instead, you know, when I... You know, if you see, you know, say you're walking down the, down the street and see a newspaper and it's got, you know, U.S. to invade Iraq or something like that. As soon as you say, oh, I don't want us to do that, you're identifying with being a member of that body rather than seeing it as being an invitation into a perspective. You know, an invitation into somebody's and what a bunch of people are up to, you know. That would be what we're talking about is true volunteerism. Obviously, we're, we're dealing with all the sort of loaded assumptions we were conditioned into as well as the people around us. It's just a constant... A constant kind of um, vigilance uh, to, to not get, you know, just just swamped into it. And this is this is what is, uh, I think, being used with the gun debate in America, with Brexit here, all the rest of it. Uh, it's just to usurp, uh, you know, continue to usurp attention to maintain that storyline of the importance of state. Having two tier state makes it even more to talk about, even more things to make important of this artificial edifice we've created that we then have to maintain all the time and take precious time and creative endeavor that we could be it doing really is a golden calf that needs to die i can't that was a great i'm glad you said that yeah now that's, that's interesting <laughs> you're talking about secession over there because you guys actually have two-tier government as well and that's why it's possible for a secession to happen oh in america got we got like seven-tier government here friend wow 
<laughs> you have you have you have federal, then you have your FEMA zones, then you have your state, then you have your uh, county, then you have your city, then you have your uh, town. You know, you have all that. You know, and then the, the 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 counties will get together and they have their own things. They'll all go in together. So that's another layer of bureaucracy. Wow. So by the end of it, you you have about seven six people over your head just directly governing you in America. Is that why such a small percentage of you have passports? Because you can't get out because you're dealing with all those seven tiers. No, people. no, no. I, I don't think. I think. I think a majority of people, whether they're right or left, uh, they don't see life outside of America as an option. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think as well because you have such a large nation, it's you know there's plenty to explore for your whole life. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. you're not going to run out of things. Well, to see. you know, and everyone always looks at America as these borders, right? And if you take away the borders, you have this huge geographical location mm -hmm. with a ton of people. And, uh, you know, they do these things just to see how cultures are and what they're tied together and what's the basis of a nation. And, and there's, uh, uh, the, through all this, they've determined that there's, uh, there could be 12 distinct nations just in the United States. So when you break, the, if, if the United States was broken into those 12 distinct, uh, distinct nations, you wouldn't be looking at it as 33 million people. I mean, when you look at Europe, you don't look at it as how many people are in Europe. You go, how many people are in Germany? How many people are in there? Yeah. People don't do that here. They go, oh, there's that many people in America, not, oh, there's that many people in Texas. There's that many people in Oklahoma. You know, it's. Yeah. They yeah. break it down on the city level. I mean, New York City divides by the boroughs, and it's really critical to know how many people are going into Manhattan because it's so constrained. It's one of the most yeah. dense that's that's what's so amazing. You want to talk about uh, bring back the island idea? Manhattan mm -hmm. is insanity. <laughs> those yeah, those like New York City is another thing that should be its own city state. Yeah. Like, like who can govern New York City? Like, I think only New York City. Like, it needs its own constitution yeah. and everything. I'm not I'm not plying for statism here, but yeah. there's no yeah. way a centralized city that large can operate. Yeah. In the current infrastructure of the world without some kind of centralized situation or at least yeah. a thing where people are like, okay, this is the corporation in control of this, this city. Yeah. yeah. And you either well, abide right. by its rules or you get out. Cause I could easily see one corporation buying up New York, New York city. If the land was for sale. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is the thing you've got, you've got this problem where, um, when you, you know, say, say you take, take any city, if you leave an area long enough, it becomes derelict and abandoned because, Everything we build requires maintaining. What nature builds doesn't need maintained. We just walk by it and it deals with it itself. So the problem we've got with these cities is that this, this thing you're talking about, this reason for um, the need for something in the city states is because they're almost like a creature in their own right because they're a completely unnatural environment. None of it is self-maintaining. None of it. All no, like of it no food is grown there, grown there. No, no, nothing no, 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 no systems to, uh, yes. Assist, sustainability people. exists there. They're, they, yeah, without statism, those cities do not exist. Exactly, that's the key. You see, that is the point. There's a really interesting um, body of thought around how, because obviously there's a relationship between cities and the agricultural revolution, um, as happening at a similar time. You know, we're only looking at about ten thousand years or something like that. Well, and that's what happened then, in Rome for sure. Really? That's what happened in Rome for sure, and that's what's happening yeah. to humanity right now with the internet and robots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robots yeah. are the next industrial revolution. They are indeed. That's it. That's it. As we become ever more, um, b b you know, redundant consumers, I suppose, if, if, if anything. No, I think the Luddites are going to try to, you know, smash all the robots. You know, I need my seven. <laughs> don't, don't hire the robots, please. I need 72 inch TV. I, 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 that's just too damn much. I need my 750. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't have more skills than that. I. I can't read. <laughs> I. Right. I. 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 I've really enjoyed this discussion, and that's I. Amazing. I. It's really cool to talk to someone that's there that is seeing all this going on, and right. I'm at. You know, just you have broke the programming, and you're watching this like we are. What like we all of us in this this chat right now, and pretty much listening to this podcast. We're all sitting on the sideline watching this, like as the only rational thinker in the whole situation. We're just sitting there watching this train wreck. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you so much coming on and talking this okay. late about yeah. this train wreck to some 
Americans that you don't even freaking know. Or <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've got no idea who you guys are. Yeah. You don't know who I am. I want to say one thing. I mean, if we're going to be wrapping up, I want to say one thing. And thank you for thank you for having me on and for inviting me. But I think, like you say, this train wreck is a good idea, a, a good analogy. And the other thing I think is an, a good analogy is it's a bit like um, certain old battles that they got fought, where um, you would have you would have a uh, Soldiers going into situations sometimes when they wouldn't even know who they were fighting or why, but they just knew that somebody had said, "All right, this is what we're doing this morning." You know, you're either in or we're, or you're ostracized or whatever. You know, you've got a limited number of choices here, but somebody else has decided, and that's the sort of push energy that's been described here. I think I've had a number of people around me describe it as feeling like, "Well, why? Why is there a referendum at all? Isn't this what we have the representatives for? Is to decide what is the best." for the communities of the of, of Great Britain on a macro economic and global society scale. That's what we've elected you for, isn't it? Why are you asking us at this point in time? And there's a number of people that have been that have quite a bit of anger over that because it's like, well It's like we quite a large you lot to have understand the issues here and not expect us to have to take all these briefings. And so all the bombardment of propaganda recently has been all these briefings. But, but, but even then, again. Chris, all you're doing is per- dis- describing the what happens when you let other people control and run your life yeah and yeah. when you see your individual power to other people this is what happens they get you into this thing called the european union it completely screws your economy and then they they say well we don't know what to do we'll let you guys choose if you want out wholly uninformed of what they've done to you yeah so yes. i mean it's so it's a farce the whole thing when you really yeah. think about it yeah it's yeah, the allegory yeah. it's the allegory of the cave essentially, except the cave doesn't exist anymore. It's the lines on the page, it's the words on the page, it's the laws, it's the stamps, it's the fanfare and the whole charade. That's the cave, and all the slaves are your every the citizens and the puppet masters behind them, and then we have our voices as the obtrusive light. It hurts. That's why we get such a backlash. We're showing them the truth, and they can look at themselves, and they see their shackles. Mm. Oh, the shackles, yeah. yeah, and then it's like, oh shit, I don't want to see that. I know what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Well, this is um, this is what you're what you're describing there, Dave. Was um, and you're right. The allegory of the cave really fits here. But this, the, some of the work I do on the idea of authority is, if you look at the word authority, it's like so in in our language, the suffix ity, itty. So reality is about what's real. Serenity is about being serene. Authority is about the author. And so it's about the story. These are always about storytellers. So, you know, in, in your family home, mum and dad are the storyteller. They tell you what, you know, what it looks like and what you do there. And in the workplace, the, work, the employer is the authority. He tells you the story of what you do here and, and how it looks. But what we're talking about here is a different type of authority. And these people are just making up a story of what they think. And the power that people have given them in their, in their mind, you know, in their mind as, as, be, as having almost like special powers of deduction or special insight or or something like that that that's magical powers yeah yeah special powers it literally is that and that's that's that but that's what the that's what because people want to believe they want to believe especially those that don't base things in reality don't get rid of the puppets please Well, per- personal responsibility is a uh, is a heavy burden to just have dumped on you all in one go, especially if you become very used to the very used to the the feeding cage, you know. Yeah, but Christopher, uh, once you see it, once you see it for yourself, yeah. Once you see it for yourself, you can either only lie to yourself so long till the truth finally beats it, yeah. Or are you you bury your your head completely in the sand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a, there are there are literally you know, pretty well only those two ways to go, isn't there? There's a uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. You said it in a nutshell there. <laughs> Welcome to the terror dome. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can, and you can totally see it. You you say something to somebody, and and it's either they completely change the subject, yeah, because they've never thought of it, and they go, well, I have nothing to talk about this, or this is way too difficult, or yeah. you know, and they bury their head in the sand, or yeah. they get very angry. They have to let this sit in for a little while, and then they come and go. You were right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and there's there's only two there's only those two types of people. Either you bury your head, yeah. or you yeah. you want to know everything. And I'm one of these people that wants to know everything. And I think a lot of the people that kind of swing our way 
or one of these or these people that like i have to know everything why am i not allowed to know this you know it's like the, 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 the hound dogs for truth you know but once you once you get the sniff you know once you you, you you smell something different you're like wait a minute where does that where does this lead me to <laughs> yeah you're right and, and uh, you just you know you continue learning and you know i i think some people tend to think that we should know everything, you know, how does this happen without a state? How does that happen without a state? You're like, you know, I have my ideas, but I don't know. But all I'm saying is nobody is free from morality, right? We're all subject yeah. to morality and it doesn't matter what costume you have on. It doesn't matter. You call Scotland yourself voted a, in. <laughs> an IRS agent or anybody. Nobody is exempt from that. So it comes down to that, to authority. Exactly what you said. Yeah, absolutely. Wales voted out. Wales voted out. Wow. And Scotland voted in. Scotland voted Scotland. in hard. 700,000 to 300. Wow. And, mm. and uh, yeah, wow. This is, this is I, I, I wish we could go all night and, and, and just do this live, but it won't be apropos because this show comes out on Monday. I just kind of wanted to give us a discussion point for yeah. the show. So Yeah, sure. Um, well, I hope I haven't wandered or meandered too much in that. It's late here. My mind has wandered somewhat. No, no. We just enjoy you being on. It's yeah, been, yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot for coming on, Chris. I really appreciate it. it. It's been a real pleasure connecting with you guys. You know, keep up, uh, keep up the great, the great work with what you're doing, trying to uh, share ideas of, you know, real because because volunteerism to me is is the ultimate extension of individualism. You know, and that's that's really it. and uh, as my as my friend says, it's a, it's a great quote, and it is uh, the most oppressed minority in the world is the individual, and mm-hmm. uh, I think if we can if we can say that, then we can. Be here as a minority group, guys. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we should collectivize and say we're the, the smallest major, minority in the world. Give us extra rights. Free oh, college. We're, we're a protected group. Come on, yeah. worldwide. You know. Anyways, I you know uh, I thoroughly enjoyed you having on, man. Uh, having you on, and I I really appreciate you staying up this late to talk. And uh, that's all right. It's really That's exciting, right. man. I I think yeah. France is on the brink of something big. I think so as well. France is on the brink of something for sure. If Britain goes, France, I think, will be next. That's what I've got to say. I think France but, is at a whole other level right now. The media is in a blackout. They are because the, Fran- Fran- the French get physical, you see. The French don't give a shit. They'll blockade the roads. They'll, forget. They'll, 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 they'll walk up to the doors of their decision makers. You know, they're... They are much more physical. The Brits are much more mental. It's a mind game over here, whereas over there they'll mm. take to the streets in a way that we don't anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting. State I don't know here. what's going on in France. I don't know if it's just radical communists that are just, hey, France is weak. Let's take over, or it's just complete idiots unrealizing that their labor isn't worth that much, mm. and economic mm. realities can only be ignored for so long. So either I, I don't know what's going on in France. I know that they just had like a 3.5 million person march in Paris. So I don't know what's going on. Like that's a shit ton of people. Like if that's that was happening huge. in America, it would be yeah. worldwide news. So that's a that's a see that's like five percent of the population turning up there. You know that's that's hmm. staggering. That's a huge number of people to to make the effort these done this day and age with competition for attention being as hot as it is. To be bothered to get off your backside, to go to your capital, to muster. Well, they shut down all the power companies. So I don't think – they shut down all the power companies outside of like super rich areas. So I'm, a, I'm pretty sure that the reason right. why people are getting out of their – off off their ass is because there's no way to watch TV or yeah. charge your cell phone after a few days. Hmm. Yeah. That will be that'll be interesting to see what, what France does. But, but you know, let's, let's see what the UK does. You know, let's see. It may be – it might be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, we could uh, chat afterwards. Take take a ten minute aftermath chat tomorrow and uh, see the after brief and share share our surprise. I think the news is going to be interesting for sure. I think it, well, it definitely is. It definitely is. One way or another, it is. Um, yeah, different different challenges for this island. Either way, that's for sure. Some some people will find it easier just to stay, but a lot of people will feel the loss of opportunity for something just a little bit different. In the same way that people felt that Scotland missed an opportunity when it had the vote recently, and there was a big aftermath there where where people were were slagging off Scotland for all the bluster and all the talk of the ability to go alone, and then and then backing out the last minute. And I think well, that I think Scotland really wants to be part of the EU, right? It does. That's the that's the thing. It really does. So, so if but, Brexit happens, then I could definitely see Scotland 
uh, uh, voting again in a referendum early next year to yeah. leave so they could yeah. rejoin the EU. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's right. And it was already well stated that that uh, it's quite likely that if if Scotland had another referendum within a few years, that it would be for out. And it was literally the older voters that swung it, and the younger they're, voters. Their pensions, making... man. Think about the yeah. pension. You're not thinking yeah. about the pensions. Yeah, of course. That's they what's going to hit this country right here. Pensions. Yeah. Yeah. One word: pensions. Yes, everybody's living thing, longer. See, a lot of a lot of a lot of English people <laughs> saw what happened in Scotland and felt the lost opportunity for change, and so they're feeling that this is their chance now in England. You know, this is their chance. They're not going to get another shot. They can't succeed from obviously Wales or Scotland, but they can from the second tier in the EU. Um, and obviously, the the, the counts that are in so far are showing that that is the flavour. Whether that plays out, who knows? But certainly that has been, as we've said, the propaganda has looked that way. The leaning seem that way. It's, well, it's, 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 it's right been, now it's on a razor's up. edge. Right now yeah, it's only it's on about 100,000 votes. 100,000 oh votes. Goodness. So, And that, 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 that to me echoes, echoes everybody's position. While, while people have been firm one way or the other, the general trend has been a razor's edge in conversation. You know, closest friends being in, out, opposing. Just... Yeah, staggering. Wow. So, One last quick question. It's from the beginning. I never got to ask you. Sure. Do the voting results usually match up with how the people feel? Typically. No. Was, no. 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 Because because the people who are who are voting with what they think are generally less vocal up front. The ones who are voting with how they feel tend to be more vocal. The thoughtful ones and the ones who are more mind-based will tend to be quieter. So and the feelsy guys look like they're going to win, and then exactly this is what happened. This is what happened with the general election. It really looked like Labour was going to take it. it just, really just look that what's. Way. That's why I've been saying Donald Trump's going to win the election since he entered the race, and yeah. I've been kind of lambasted for that that's by people. Terrifying guys. Sorry. Yeah. I, 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 it is terrifying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. Uh, continuation of the United States government in any fashion is terrifying, but <laughs> uh, 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 Donald Trump is going to win for one reason. The left has no a legitimate argument against Donald Trump. All they have is feels. They don't. The, us anarchists and voluntarists, we have logical arguments against Donald yeah. Trump that shit on him, but we do not have statist arguments that yes. that beat him. Right now, he is winning America. He is. He is winning America. People don't want to accept it. It's like a just like yeah. you said. Everybody's acting out. They're not the ones that are they're thinking it. But I'm talking to my parents. I'm talking to my parents' friends. I'm talking about the people that actually vote in this country. And every one of them are like, Trump or bust. Wow. So yeah. you, saw, you yeah. saw Trump's would be assassin, right? Yeah. No. I, was he a Bernie supporter? Because he well, he was from England. Plan, what, it was weird. His whole plan was to steal someone's gun first. <laughs> <laughs> How much more social? What? Uh, well, he was taking it from a cop, so it was just another part of the government that he loves. Oh yeah, part of the game. He he game. owns it. We are the government, so it was just his gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you really right. think about it. Staggering, staggering to see that. But there, this this is again what we we're just talking about there, where where feelings are being tapped to to surge past people's reasoning capacity. You know, it's like there's a really interesting catchphrase that's, that's hit the UK recently as a result of a. Uh, What's that? Observations what are not a destination. Observation is not a destination? That's pretty cool. That's right, that's right. And science is based on observation. It's not a destination mm. there. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, I forgot what I was going to say there now. Oh, oh sorry. No, don't worry. Don't apologize. It's, it's, it's fine. We need to wrap up anyways. Yeah, let Emilo yeah. talk for a minute about this. We've been mm. kind of letting him sit in the corner quietly. Let's that's let him right. talk. No, that's right. I'm just listening. <laughs> How, how's that everything with the wife and the kids and, 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 and the, the peaceful parenting? And what's the news on yours and Melissa's podcast? Is that going to kick off anytime soon? Or? Yeah, I, I haven't heard much from her. I think she's pretty busy with uh, her life. and I know she was trying to move so or something. Kids, like yeah, with the moving. And so, yeah, I think that kind of got put on the back burner. Are, are you still so, planning on oh. naming the podcast Non-Aggressive Parenting? Yeah. Non-aggressive. Yeah, we yeah. got the whole – we got the um, – the logo. Somebody, did you make the logo, Cody? You made it. Nice. I did. I'm gonna redo it because that was before I started learning shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a very nice looking logo. 
I, I, I did. Oh, this is my shirt too. Oh, you did that too. Oh, nice. And the hat. Awesome. So I should probably gave you the stores to plug. You're an artistic man. Awesome. Very important to have artists in the in the Liberty community. So, so well, if you like, didn't know, Chris, uh, 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 Danilo is uh, unschooling his children, meaning he's not putting them in any formal education. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's letting them set their own curriculum. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How old yeah. are your children? I have a six-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I um, I kind of uh, got together a lot of homeschooling families around me. And um, so I got a little group going. So uh, I'm, I'm around primarily homeschooling mothers. So I, I uh, have not – I don't think I've turned any of them to volunteerism. But uh, one woman uh, that I talked to today, she, she was telling me that she listens to the Seeds of Liberty occasionally. And uh, she's a Bernie supporter, but she listens to the stuff. So she's it, she she said she'll entertain it. She'll think it. She's not going to agree with everything, but she'll listen to it, which well, is that's good. good. That's, that's, that's a start. A start. Yeah. yeah. So um, will it be being willing to open the door? You know, at, I, I, that's why I hate statism so much, and, and almost any other religious belief is it makes you so it 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 digs you in like a tick, and it makes you automatically opposed to believing the opposite. Mm. Yeah, mm. one of my favorite um, Aristotle quotes, right? You can um, the 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 sign of mark of, in, of an intelligent man is to entertain an idea without accepting it, right? And uh, I think that uh, <laughs> a lot of people cannot do that, unfortunately. And yeah. that's that's yeah. the death of wisdom, right there. Yeah, you know? I agree. When, here's, when, here's something I noticed with it, and in, in my work is um, the language of statism, where to fight, for people to find the statist in themselves even when they claim they're not a statist is there's interesting things that denote the statist in oneself so we use language like uh, oh Dave, you, you're you growing your beard you know, where it's like no, you shave Yeah, growing the beard isn't an action the shave is the so oh, oh Dave uh, you, you, you came out with oh, a, 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 we're so programmed oh. yeah <laughs> they, they, you, you went, that you might just be it. a cultural thing. Well, the reason no, Western cultural. society no. started shaving no. so much is because no. of American presidents. Did you know no. that? No, and that there's, makes no, me sad. It, it's before then. It's Romans. The Romans brought it in. The Romans oh. were the shavers. But um, Caesar <laughs> shaved. So yeah, I guess. Yeah, he... the, the point being that there's, there's other there's other things like that where wherever it's like alternative medicine. It's like no, that's native medicine. Mm -hmm. What statism does is it claims ownership over what is the normal you. So they might say, oh, Dave, you went out naked today. Are you a naturist? <laughs> it's like, no, you got dressed. I'm I just a freak. I just oh. walked outside. So what the status does is <laughs> it names, the status like that. names actions that aren't States. actions. Statists, right? objectists. They turn yeah. these the statist things in one's head names actions that aren't actions. And that's that's the that's the little judge inside, inside the program judge that people don't realize. Well, I, I think it. there are cultures that, and, and culture does drive some of these uh, behaviors. Uh, yeah, and, and culture is largely uh, backed in uh, as a programming, just like statism, just like uh, Catholicism or, or Islam or anything like that. Yeah. It's all a programming. Yeah. And uh, I think people that can see past their programming are the people I really like to be around. And, and Chris, I think yeah. you're a kindred spirit in this. And if I'm yeah, ever absolutely. happen to be a, in England, we're definitely going out for a cold beer. Come this way. You're welcome. <laughs> Stay connected. All you guys, welcome to come and hang out. I'll show you some interesting right. things. I guarantee it. And likewise, if I ever dare enter your territory again, which I'm not <laughs> sure I will, um, then, then, uh, then you don't want to come see. Thing. You don't want to come grovel at the, the the throne of God Emperor Trump. Well, I have. Uh, I visited America. I loved it. I had a great time there. I had a fantastic time there. But since I was there, maybe twenty odd years ago, you know, your your you know your state has just become a little bit less predict less predictable than they were before. I just don't, I just don't trust your state. I, guys. I, I think <laughs> I think I think what goes on in our states and whatnot and what the media does and stuff because. You know, we only have this idea, this fleeting idea, or most of us do, of, of what's going on in, in, across the world just through what the media says and what, you know, we might hear as hearsay. Uh, and, you know, what's going on in America right now, I can tell you, uh, is a lot of uncertainty from everyone. 
Everyone is uncertain right now, but everyone's still po uh, they're still posturing like they've got it composed, like they know what's going on. But right now, this election, it feels to me bigger than the first Obama election. Yeah. It yeah. feels bigger than the Gore. Uh, yes. Yes. The Gore, uh, the first Gore Bush. Yes. Thing. Gore it, Bush. It, it, this election right now, because Hillary Clinton, there is so much going on with Hillary Clinton that she might go to jail and she probably should go to jail and she probably won't. And then if she gets elected, there's probably going to be bad things. And then, well, here's Donald Trump. If he gets elected, what happens? So, you know, and then there's us on the sideline. We're going, this is all a shell game, guys. You need to start preparing for yourself and protecting and, and doing everything for yourself. Yes. Yes, yes. Take indeed. your life into your own hands because these politicians yes. are not going to fix it. Yeah, that is exactly it. That's what it's about. You can get it, get responsibility it. all the way. And then, but the thing is, where did we even get the idea in the first place? So deeply ingrained in our psyche that we should farm these things out to other people. You know, where where did that come in? Where where did it come in that we should that we should expect others to give this to us or to provide? Well, for imagine us? this, Such okay? Architecture. Imagine this. Imagine you are the head of a mob flat. or a a warring band of warlords. The easiest way to placate people is to take over them and then raise them in your cult or raise them in your gang or raise them in your yeah. thing to where they're part of it, and they just see that as the status norm, the status quo. That's the that is the basis of all co cults is pull away from society, build your own, and uh, that's not ever what we're trying to do. That's not what volunteers try to do. We're trying to say, hey, everyone, there's this thing called freedom that you should probably be doing. <laughs> we don't, yeah. we're not saying, hey, leave society, close yourself off, you know, like, like the status do. They say, oh, no, we need to put up the borders. We need to build a wall to block out. The no, it's not going to work. We need yeah. to build a road. Yeah. We need a flat surface. We need a concrete slab. We need this structure. We need this. We need that bridge. We need. It's everything we interact with on a daily basis is so disconnected from our natural, yeah, awesomeness that it starts driving these things. We're dictating. We're stating every time you put a brick down. Yeah, there's a there's a, an interesting thing that's happened in the state here. Where it's, it's to do with, uh, it's just a, a play on language again, where uh, it was a quote from a, an employ a big employer recently where it was talking about the behavior of employees and it was saying, discrimination of any sort will not be tolerated by so and so. Uh, and it just made me giggle because obviously the meaning of true, the true meaning of discrimination is discernment. You know, it's discernment. Discrimination of any kind will not be tolerated, and that's 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 what we're that's put what we're your head down, people. be a good right? little sheep, don't yeah, ask any questions, exactly. and head to the exactly. slaughterhouse. That's yeah. all they want you to do is yeah. be, an exp be a battery and don't yeah. cause any problems. Discernment is division. Discernment mm -hmm. is discrimination. You, and you know? know what? No matter what the media says, everyone's got these ideas beat into their head. Everyone discriminates no matter what. No matter yeah. what their biases is, exactly. if you don't believe me, you know every every one of these people pro protesting and pushing for equality. I just tell it's it's not possible. And if you don't believe me, let me go drop you in downtown Riyadh right now, and then you yeah. go walk around preaching that bullshit and see how fast you get your head chopped off. Yes. The, yeah. Just tell them to jump. This is a, they can this jump is higher. A, sorry. Just tell yeah, them to sorry. jump, and they jump higher. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. This is this is it. This is just disease. It's diseased. It's diseased mind. It's a usurping of the idea of uh, unity, i.e., cohesion, as meaning this cancerous sameness or single, S single. For the sake of itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or single, single overarching authority, as if that was mimicking consciousness in some way. That seems to be what it seems trying to be a parody of. But I always use the example of the body, where it's like, well, to me. My body only functions because of its division, because of the dis discernment between the organs where my kidney isn't having a whinge at the lungs for how they do their job. The lungs isn't, isn't poking fun at the brain. I only experience the unity of myself because of the division inherent within the body. And that, I think, is what we have to respect in the diversity on the planet and see that the, 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 the pillaging of indigenous perspective and, and connection with the land in all its forms is part of that erosion of the natural... D d d d d discrimination. The statism <laughs> forces this narrative uh, like, it, that is it messes up cultures. I see what you're saying. It does. 
It's cancerous. What it's doing is it's taking healthy, diverse cells and converting it to sameness. That's what a cancer does. You know, it's really interesting to see that, well, to have McDonald's in Kathmandu, to have McDonald's in, De in, in, in Delhi, to have McDonald's in Egypt. I've got a great picture from Cairo, um, in, you know, from Cairo with the Sphinx in the background with the Pizza Hut logo in front of it because mm -hmm. I was sitting in Pizza Hut just to get the picture of the Pizza Hut logo with the Sphinx right in the background. So you don't get to see <laughs> that in the pictures with the pyramids of the desert in the background. You don't get to see that Cairo is like 100 yards on the other side. You get the desert backdrop, not the giant city attached to the side of it. It's just, <laughs> yeah, part of that, that game is played. Anyway, losing my well. head. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, corporatism is crazy. That's a whole podcast episode in itself. Oh, my goodness. It's a, it's a series, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Psychopathy, sociopathy, you know, and narcissism. So you guys want to uh, deliver your final remarks before we uh, close up? Yeah, uh, I, I I'll close since I've done I guess a majority yeah. of the talking here. Right now it's three million to basically three million. It's fifty fifty uh, as of uh, I don't know at three a.m. right now. Um, it is five to three. Yes, three a.m. So I don't know what's going to happen in Britain. I I hope there's not a lot of turmoil. I hope you're safe. I hope all of this is kind of a diffusal. <laughs> I hope wild crazy stuff doesn't happen because there is this odd chance that Britain gets out. And there is a lot of uncertainty of what's going to happen. And there could be overreaction. And there could be things that happen. Uh, you know, there's a lot of this coulda, coulda, coulda. And uh, yeah. I, I just hope for your safety, man. And, and you know, I, I, Britain's, uh, Britain is, I feel like, a bomb that's been wound up and that it's ticking. It's, it is ticking. It is ticking. It is ticking. It's a palpable miasma here. I'm sure, I'm sure I will be safe. I have a... Uh, I have my uh, my trust in my capacity to connect with my fellow man. So <laughs> on that localized human-to-human -human level, no matter what mad uniform or powers they've got, I can engage, so that's okay. But I hear what you're saying, you know. This really could go in any number of ways with any number. I mean, as an island, considering its real size, this island has had incredible impact on global affairs over, over a period of time in recent years. It's Last staggering. thousand yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. And, and so... So when, I was I was when, talking with with another uh, someone from England uh, as well, and I was just saying, you know, how culturally the entire world is driven by Britain. It isn't driven by yeah. America. Everyone thinks it culturally is driven by America. Media wise, it might be driven by America, but yeah. culturally, deep down, the way we yeah. function as a society, yeah, is Britain one hundred percent. I agree. That's so, a very useful illusion. So what? How goes Britain? How goes the world? In my opinion, mm. Mm. I agree. I agree. Mm. Whatever happens here will influence the world. Absolutely, absolutely. There's no no doubt about that. No doubt. Yeah. Which way is it going to go? You don't get to pick what time period or place you're born in, and Britain yep. just happens to be one of those times where we're still on the back end of a British Empire collapse. Two hundred years exactly. past an empire is not that big. It really yeah. isn't. Yeah. So. Mm. Hey, so yeah, yeah, and the Brit the Brits was the most recent empire as well. Really, it was a very recent empire. The last full scale global empire for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so because of that, that's that, I think that's part of that influence you're talking about as well. Well, America yeah. is is a uh, is an empire, but not in the sense of the Actual. way Britain the Brit way Britain was an empire. The way Britain would go in is is they would send the army in and say British Petroleum is now the only corporation allowed to operate on these lands. If you come over here, we'll kill you. America kind of goes over and blows people up, puts people in charge, and it's a little different story. Uh, I see Britain just kind of takes over. That, that's like <laughs> my little quip with uh, taxation is not necessarily. That. See, America's uh, Empire version 2.0. We control you, but we don't kind of thing. Yeah. It's like a puppet yeah. over here on the corner. Uh, yeah. Britain, was, Britain learned the hard way that you can't just put the boot all the time. So. Exactly. Exactly. They did. They did indeed. And they're applying that very well with some incredible psychological gameplay. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, Danilo, awesome. I hope well, you wrap us uh, up in uh, one of those classic Danilo fashions. Bo, Bo, do you want to say any, any last closing remarks before we sign off? Uh, check out the Agora. There's going to be some cool stuff going on. Tax awesome. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> and the Sovereignty Network. And the Sovereignty ah, Network. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> So okay. would you get locked up if you just walked around and said taxation is theft to people over there in Britain? No, there's people doing that right now. That's actually there's people paying for billboards that say taxation is theft on it. 
because it is. That's wow. the best news really? I've heard all day. Yeah, really? We got to start yeah. a crowdfund to start buying up the busiest fucking interstates in every city and putting up wow. a billboard that just says taxation and stuff. I might try yeah. to start that this week. Yeah. I wow. just spoke to a friend recently who had graduated at law. He did it to intentionally work within the system. And uh, I, knew him, I knew him from my previous previous days in challenging law. And uh, he... He 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 recounted to me that his first law lecture, the uh, the woman came in and she said, "Can anyone tell me a, a crime?" And nobody would reply. She said, like, "Come on, who who will tell me a crime?" And he just threw in there. He just put up his hand and he said, "Tax." And she burst out laughing, <laughs> burst out <laughs> laughing, and she said, "I'm going to borrow that and use that in the future if you don't mind, young man." <laughs> <laughs> if, if anyone else was, tried to tax you, it would be criminal, wouldn't it? It would be. It would, it's an extortion racket because nice. if you don't give it, then then uh, you soon find out what the state is really made up of, which is escalated charges backed up by force. You know, mm-hmm. that's exactly it. Well said. That's all. Yeah, that's awesome. all it is. Awesome uh, conversation, gentlemen. Uh, Thanks, Christopher, gr- great to meet you. Thanks for um, this. Awesome. Yes, uh, the world will be. I think. I think you're right, Dave. You know how goes Britain goes the world, um, and uh, and so I think uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Um, not not I, not what, necessarily. Uh, when I say that, I don't necessarily mean how goes Britain, how goes the world, uh, government wise or anything. I'm just talking about the way society is structured is a very British thing right now. Even no, India, right. even yeah. India is structured, and you're this right. is a yeah. place that wasn't structured before Britain. Right. So yeah. it. Like everyone's still reeling from this and we're still in the midst of it. We're just, we're in the midst of a phase here, guys. Mm -hmm. The internet is changing society and that's what we're seeing. This end of this Anglo society. That's right. Into this more global internet society. And you're seeing Mm -hmm. everyone reel right now. This is this, this right wing swing is that right now. They're not, I mean, people don't realize it, but statism is dying horribly. Yeah. Because the story has failed, hasn't it? The story, in yeah. all its possible forms, in all its political frameworks, we feel like we've tried them all, and people are saying they don't work because the inherent human foible is getting in the way. You know, it's the, it's the, it's the. Don't put that kind of burden on some poor human being because they're going to crack in one form or another. Don't then have oh, a go at them for becoming such. Sucked- some perverted narcissist because it was going to happen. You can't expect the frail human shoulders. To I can't even remember to get toilet thing. paper and I shit every day. So I can't imagine trying to make decisions. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to make decisions for someone's life, like choosing who's going to get exactly. jobs, who's not, what wow. area is going to be yeah. economically you viable, you know, it. without yeah, even far. speaking in it in honest terms. Yeah. Let's help you, them, it, but it's really serving someone else. It's like, you're, you, you nailed it right. there with that whole the pretense, the pretense of the sort of stoic evolved man as being, you know, it's like London. Trying to find a public toilet in London that works it's as if bladders and anuses don't <laughs> exist. You know, that's the kind of world. Like, no, we don't have those functions. We're not even in our bodies. That's go, our, go to a private thing. toilet and it works fine. It's nice and clean and neat. You go to a private toilet and it's like. I mean, a public toilet, and it's Probably like, what nice. happened in here? It just shows the tragedy of the commons, and people don't yeah. understand that. That's the simplest yeah. analogy I'm ever going with. Would you rather yeah, use I a agree. private toilet or a public toilet? Yeah. If you don't answer public toilet, don't ever preach to me socialism again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. awesome conversation, gentlemen. Uh, thank nice. you very much. Um, so, so if anybody wants to help us out, uh, you can do so. Like, comment, or share the videos. You can subscribe to us um, on uh, iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, you can also donate to us through Patreon, patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty, help us out. Dollar Show would be very helpful to help us uh, pay for the overhead and uh, help us do what we lo- love doing I, best. I really so, appreciate all the guys helping us out right now, helping me out, pay for hosting and stuff. It really means a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, this we is, just uh, hit, I think, twenty thousand downloads total on 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 just our 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 audio uploads on our RSS feed. So beautiful. See that the, the love is spreading. So very I nice to you. Start watching. <laughs> edit that out Jeremy <laughs> so uh, yeah thanks a lot everyone for uh, for a wonderful conversation so this is uh, Seeds of Liberty podcast wishing everyone have a wonderful day take care bye peace, peace.
Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Are you tired of driving your kids to Gigi Allen's grave only to be unable to find the grave because some dick stole the headstone? Well, there is a solution. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app for Android will give you door-to-grave directions. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app uses advanced GPS protocols to guide you with voices to the exact patch of dust and grass where Gigi took his final dirt nap. Bring the kids. Do some needle drops at the gigi place on Earth. Gigi always had a huge underground following, but it's even bigger now that he's literally underground. So it's no surprise that lots of folks today take a pilgrimage to Gigi's grave. But getting there wasn't easy. Until this app. Forget Graceland, forget the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Those are plastic places for old people with jobs. Hell, even CBGB's is gone. And that former hollowed ground is now a yuppie coffee bar. The real rock and roll mecca is an unmarked patch of grass in Littleton, New Hampshire. And our free app will show you how to get there. Get the Find Gigi Allen's Grave app today. Even if you're not planning to go there soon, the app is fun. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app is covered by the BIPCOT No Government License, and it's from the good people at Beast Lick Internet Policy Commission Outreach Team, who also brought you Fiend Phone, the Freedom Fiends Radio app, BIPCOT, Meow Bit, and of course, Truth, Justice, American Way. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app is free. Get it today on the Google Play Store or on Amazon. Your family will thank you. And don't forget to rate and review. Worms, eating Gigi Allen's face. Good, good, good. 